Let's see some suds, Tom. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> now, Tom. Yeah. Just act natural. Do whatever it is you do in the shower. <laughs> Anything I do? Jay la luna met su madre, Except sing. No sing. Hi, everybody. We are back with Ayo Away, the Who's the Boss podcast. That was pretty good. That was a little better. Yeah. Felt it. Okay, so uh, this time we are covering episode five. We have, we've done five episodes. Only, Only 189 well, more to go or whatever it is. 190, 191, 191 more to go. That's all right. Um, so, okay, we're going to get right into it today. We don't really have any news or anything else to discuss beforehand. Um, this episode is called A Rash Decision. It first aired in November 13th, 1984. Mm. And so last week I was a little, we weren't sure if it was a Tuesday or not yet. This is a Tuesday. So only the first two episodes aired on Thursdays before they were pulled they were off the air for a little less than a month, and then they came back on Tuesdays. Ah. Yeah. So the title, the summary for this is, Tony develops a skin rash after doing a soap commercial for Angela's potentially large account. This is a good one. I think we should get right into it. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So... What else are we going to do? <laughs> so the beginning of this episode... We see Tony getting the kids ready for school, and the thing I like about yeah. the thing I like about this is last week, Tony really established himself as man of the house when he was fixing the plumbing, and now this week we're seeing that Tony is basically mom. Yeah, that's a good that's a good observation. Yeah, like, I mean, he is in the mom role in this house. He knows everyone's schedule. He's getting them all ready for school getting Angela ready for work. He knows that Samantha needs her ice skates. Right. Jonathan needs his science project. Right. Angela needs her portfolio. So, like, not only is he getting them ready, he has everybody's schedule down. And knows what they need. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, great observation. And the other observation I noticed was that when Angela comes down the stairs with Jonathan and sees his science project... It's clearly the first time she's seen that science project. I, I thought the same thing. I thought it was kind of funny. So Tony, she's like, well, that's a really nice whatever that right. is. <laughs> so Tony is most likely who helped him make Ooh. that. So I thought that was cute. So not only is he man of the house, he's also... Yeah, all great the, observations. The mom the role. Beginning. Yeah. So um, they are all getting ready to, to leave for the day. Angela has a very large commercial shoot, um, and but but like well, right before that happens, I love that um, Mona comes in and says something that I would say when the kids are all leaving. They're like, "Hi, Mona," and then she says, "Hi, short people." Yeah, that was really cute. <laughs> that was really cute. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just kind of yeah. funny. And then she looks on to um, I, my my details are probably silly, but she looks on to Tony's list. And she says, or what is it? He says, I didn't know you were coming today. Right, She's right. just like, I'm right there right. on your list right next to take out, take out trash. Right. And he's like, that's actually Trish. I know. Because it's a day that he's going to go out on. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that I don't like that joke. Oh, okay. Like, I feel like that joke isn't something that we would see today. No, it isn't. Which I thought, like, comparing a woman to trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, then I, I took a turn there. I I just thought it was funny that it was a misspelling or something, so... Well, you, you know, she says... But he says it's similar. Right, uh, right. Because right. she says uh, trash, and he says, no, that's Trish, but you're close. Right. Yeah, but I thought that was, like, one of those jokes that we would not... No, you would absolutely not hear that today. today. But yeah. it, was, it was funny. Um, I mean, interesting funny, not ha-ha funny. Right. Um... So Angela comes down with so many clothes on. Like, she's got, like, this elaborate blouse with a tie, jacket mm-hmm. with a scarf. Mm-hmm. Like, she's she's dressed to the nines for this uh, commercial shoot. 
And I will touch a little bit on Angela's clothes because Judith Light had a really big part in dressing Angela. When the show first um, was picked up, like I think she was going to be way more conservatively dressed than we saw. And Judith Light was basically basically said, like, this woman works on Madison Avenue, and we need to make her clothes be as much of a statement as the show. And so she catered a lunch and had, like, a whole fashion show, what she thought that Angela should wear, Mm -hmm. and they bought into it. And it cost them a lot more than they were planning to spend. Really? Yeah. But they did it, and I think it worked, because as ridiculous as her clothes are now, when we look back, and the shoulder pads are enormous... And everything is bedazzled. I think for the time, like she said, we I want people to talk about her outfits as much as they talk about the show. And I, I, th- I mean, I think they definitely achieved that. They achieved for that, sure. yes. Yeah. So she was always supposed to look a little out of place in Connecticut because she was dressed for New York City, which I think is interesting. But now... Um, I heard a couple of interviews where Judith Light and Tony Danza were making fun of how large the shoulder pads are. <laughs> the shoulder pads are out of control. <laughs> so, I know that's an 80s thing, but yeah. they were out of control. So big. Okay, so back on track. Um, basically, Tony and Mona weasel their way onto this commercial shoot set. Right, by I, convincing An- Angela to right, take them. to take them along. Um, so they show up, and it's... The commercial's for a body wash named Machismo. <laughs> <laughs> you already know it's going to be interesting with, yes. just with that title. Um, and one of the first actors that we see walk by is Herb. So he's played by James Hampton. He's who first comes over and um, talks to Angela. And Mona makes the comment about how he wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for Angela or something like that. And he's also the one that makes the comment about him being her housekeeper. Right. But what do you recognize him from? Do you recognize him? Is it, hang on. It's the, is it the director or the... No, not the director. The first guy that comes over. No, I recognize him, but I didn't look him up. But okay. I did look up the director. Okay. It's the dad from Teen Wolf. That's what I remember him from. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, pro- I wouldn't have spotted that. I mean, I remember Teen Wolf, and I know you were a big... Yeah. Teen Wolf fan, like you, you used to watch that movie a lot or whatever. Yeah. But I don't, um, I wouldn't have recognized him from that. Yeah. But I knew I did recognize him, but I didn't look him up. I guess he's also in Sling Blade, but I did not recognize him from that. Oh, I would. I think I do remember him from Sling Blade. Really? Yeah. But he's the one that makes the housekeeper joke, and Tony says, "You could call me the maid, but I wouldn't." Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> I didn't remember that. So then we meet Mr. Larson, who is the owner of the company, um, Lankershim Cosmetics. Right. Um, and he's who's there to shoot the commercial. Um, that actor is John Engel. Mm-hmm. And I know him best as Edward Quartermain on General Hospital. And he also did a stint, I think, on Days of Our Lives as well. But he had over 100 acting credits on IMDb. And he passed away in 2012 at the age of 84. Oh, yeah, you know a lot. But he's, well, I just looked him up. But he's another one. Um, but I actually, I do remember when he passed away because I used to watch General Hospital a lot. My mom still does. Um, but he's another one of those actors that always kind of looked old. Yeah. Because. That was a thing back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Edward Quartermain was always old and he, he looked rather old here. He was yeah. always much younger than General Hospital. So. As soon as Larson meets Tony, he thinks that he's the machismo man. Right. Which, I mean, you can see it, right? Yes. Machismo. Yes. If Tony Tony Danza (laughs) says nothing more than machismo. (laughs) So I feel really bad for the guy who actually showed up for that part. Though we never see him and he never never existed, but yes, you felt bad for him. I mean, they probably still paid him, I guess, and then just for his time and sent him home. If it was a real commercial and a real... Right, they would have had to pay him. Yes, they would have had to pay him. (laughs) Poor guy, he had his chance. But I do do like, and maybe it's like an Italian stereotype, but the the executive, he likes him. He didn't even know who he was at all. He's just like, that's the guy, hire him. Right, Tell the other 
actor that we hired right. who probably auditioned. <laughs> there was a day, you know, I mean, here in L.A., they do these auditions. They're, they go on forever. They, <laughs> but, yes. you know, strategically pick somebody. No, send them home. Yeah, done. I picked this guy who yeah. I didn't even, I haven't even heard talk yet. Right. Pretty much. And he, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of funny. And who has no acting experience except for... Right playing the camel in his third grade play right when I have that <laughs> in my notes too <laughs> but we also get so I love the Italian names that show up on this show and here is one of them because Vivian Lordacino was the other hump yes Vivian Lordacino there's going to be some other fun Italian names on this episode oh good because I have one written down too okay, yeah. it's probably the same as yours nice. you, you take that one so then the director shows up. It's Matthew Lawrence. Yes, this is, is the one the I'm actor? talking about. Yeah. Mel Silver. Yes. I had, to, I had to look. I couldn't remember who Mel Silver was. I kept thinking it was the guy who owned the Peach Pit, but no, it's he's not. No, he's the father. He's David's father. David's father. Yeah, and Kelly's stepdad I looked up. Yeah, I knew who he was, and I knew he was a father on 90210, but I didn't know whose father. Yeah. And I, But I just remember him being in 90210. And he was also in an episode of Taxi. So I wonder if he knew Tony uh, Danza already. Uh, the Taxi Connection. Yeah. Okay. So he's kind of annoyed that this guy is now going to be taking over his commercial. Right. Um, but they roll with it. They start blocking. We introduce um, the woman who, Ginger, who um, is playing off of him. Right. Who Tony is yep. very excited that right. he gets to be in a commercial with her. Right, because she's well endowed. And that's <laughs> obviously, I mean, it's the 80s, and that's the joke. Um, and her name is Randy Brooks. I looked mm. her up. She's okay. best known for The Man with Two Brains, starring Steve Martin. <laughs> yeah, I remember that movie. Really? I mean, I, I yes, but I don't all. remember her. Okay. It's been the, probably, yeah. I don't know how many years since I've seen that movie, but I totally remember that movie. But she had quite a few other like secondary characters um, roles in 80s and 90s television. So um, I love when she starts talking and her voice doesn't at all match her face or um, whatever Tony is expecting to come out of her mouth. But she doesn't seem very excited to work with Tony. But she's getting paid, so. Yeah, right. So, okay. We get in, Tony gets in the shower, <laughs> immediate whistles from the audience, which I think is funny. And we now get, this This is the second time I think we'll see Tony Danza without his shirt on. Mm-hmm. So I feel like this was probably a way just to get him without his shirt on again. Yes. And the audience seemed very excited. But yes, of course- Yes, which I, I will touch on later. <laughs> He, he, of course, takes down the sexy when he immediately starts singing in Italian and just doing regular Tony Maselli stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he's terrible. I mean, he's not at all equipped to do this part. Um, and Angela sees that this is going downhill pretty quickly. She even puts on giant glasses, hoping that she can see something else right. better in her future <laughs> all of a sudden they cut to her and she has the largest pair of glasses on again um so they break for lunch and angela has an idea she saves the shoot by basically saying that ginger is going to do all the lines and tony's just going to come out at the end and right. say one line. and then yeah right and still even be terrible in that line but it doesn't matter <laughs> but it doesn't matter at that point <laughs> but um i have a few side notes about this whole scene. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, at one point, um, Mona breaks off when at first they hire Tony or whatever, and she's like, I have to go call my oh, stockbroker, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, do you know where I'm going with this? No. Because I have a theory. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go out on, a, on way out in left field here. Wow. Okay. So anyway, she goes on the phone, she calls the stockbroker. And I don't know if it's the first time she calls her the second time, but she says, I don't care what E.F. Hutton says, people listen to Mona or whatever. Because right. do you know who E.F. Hutton is? No, not. I mean, it was a oh. financial institution, no? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. And then the, the commercial for E.F. Hutton was, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. Oh. Because she says, I don't care what E.F. Hutton says, Mona's I see. listen to Mona or whatever. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to go even, it even gets crazier. Okay. So who she calls on the phone... She says, hey, Bernie, it's Mona. 
Right. You know, I want to buy stock oh, in whatever okay. company. Okay. Bernie Madoff was a big, was the big, who did the it was the Ponzi scheme. Right, right. Uh, guy later right, on. Right, right, right. Went to jail. He's in jail now. Mm-hmm. He was a big, he was like the biggest stock investor of the oh. time in the 80s. And both times she's like, hey, Bernie. Right. So like, why would Bernie, the name Bernie, be significant? Right. Other than it's probably Bernie Madoff. I don't have anything to back that up. <laughs> and if anybody out there does, maybe yeah. Bernie's just a happens to be a made. But why would she call somebody the stock, you know, like a stock, an investor, right? Stock investor, and then say Bernie because Bernie was yeah. huge. That's what, how he when he built his oh. empire was in the eighties. Okay, that's when actually yeah. they say. I actually looked up the information. They say that's when the um, Ponzi scheme started. Yeah. Was actually even as far back as the eighties, like in the late eighties, he started taking people's money and doing all this stuff because he had so many investors. I so bet you're right. I it was wonder. An inside I, joke, maybe. I feel, yeah, or like just because at the just time everybody knew who Bernie knew, Madoff right. was in exactly. the 80s, he was the big. So she's like, hey, Bernie. Right. Like, why would they say, why would they have her say, hey, Bernie? Anyway, right. okay, enough about that. I got excited when I saw that. I'm like, wait a minute. So I started doing research on Bernie Well, thank you. Because I kind of glossed over that whole part. I I know. And I knew you would because there was no significance to it. Yeah. Like they kind of didn't really know what to do with Mona, I felt like. So they just gave her a telephone and had her do this whole spiel. But yes. Yeah. Like both times when she makes a phone call, she's like, hey, Bernie. Right. So I'm like, I bet you they're talking about Bernie Madoff. Yeah, so at first she wants to sell all of her stuff because she thinks this is going to be the worst commercial ever. Oh, that's what and it is, then right? Then she and puts then, all of her money back in because she right, realizes because that. Because she realizes it's. Because Angela saved the day. Right. But that is, so that's one anyway. of my. Eventually we'll have a segment once I get my stuff together. But and the other side thing I wrote in my notes is it could be believable that Mona actually knows. Bernie made off right. because <laughs> Mona, Mona is so right. Because right. she's Mona. <laughs> like she could actually know him. Right. And back then, obviously, he wasn't, you know, he didn't have a Ponzi scheme going that right. they knew of or whatever. Right, right. So he was just a big investor. But that is a reference that no one's going to get today. No, absolutely yeah. not. Um, you're, I mean, wel- you're welcome. Well, actually, adults may only because Bernie Madoff has been. Arrested. Well, I, I think everybody but I don't even knows think... who Bertie Mainoff is now, right? Yeah, they yeah yeah they do because he of the of the Ponzi know. scheme, right? Right. Um, but like, I didn't even really recognize the name E.F. Hutton. Like, I kind of yeah. Did, I'm a little not... older than you, so I do remember those commercials, though. Um. So later that afternoon, Mona gets home with the kids from school, and they are all super excited for Tony. Tony's super excited um, until he starts scratching <laughs> like a crazy. Itching like crazy. <laughs> yes. And he's like rubbing himself all over the kitchen sink. And I don't know if you noticed this, but he takes us, or Mona hands him a spatula. And he starts yes, scratching totally, his back with I, the spatula. That's in my notes. <laughs> and then the spatula breaks. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that part. I yes. just noticed he was scratching himself with a spatula. And see, then he tries to put the spatula back together so that he can continue scratching himself and it doesn't work. So he just throws it down. So as all this is happening, um, Angela comes in on a high about how great the day went. She's so excited. Um, you know, she knows that this is probably one of the biggest accounts she's going to have. And... They have to tell Angela that he's scratching like crazy. Right. Yep. Except for where he had the little bikini on. And the great thing about that scene is when Tony tells Angela about the rash, he lifts his shirt to show her, and you hear the audience, the women in the audience, just go crazy. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. Know it, it was like it's like woo. <laughs> like this is all of a sudden screaming. Like he hadn't had his shirt off like right you know, er- earlier. Yeah, and earlier, like ten minutes or whatever of the whole episode. Plus now it's all covered in red blotches. But I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The, the, the fact is, he lifted his shirt and right. they probably didn't expect it to happen. Yeah. The definition is still there. <laughs> right. This just made me laugh. I was like <laughs> So the next day they go back um, to meet with Larson and let him know that this happened to Tony. And it turns out that he already knows. Um, Angela and Tony tell him that they can expect this in 2% of the people who use it. And he's like, oh, that's better than our numbers, which were 3%. (laughs) Right. 
Yeah. So they realize that he knows this and he doesn't care. Um, so to kind of get them to stay on his side, he like dangles this really big account to Angela saying the dandruff right. account <laughs> apparently is tremendous and he's telling Tony like oh we could get another actor but you're gonna miss out on these three to four thousand dollar a month residuals right like is that real I mean I know if you get a national commercial you get a pretty big payout in the beginning and then you will get some during the run but it's not like he's gonna be making three to four thousand dollars a month for the rest of his life or anything. Yeah, I have no idea. If anybody out there knows, right? But let us I mean, know. that was probably a lot of money in 1984, and especially for Tony, who's right. driving a van that he paid three hundred dollars for. Yes. And so the vacuuming curtains. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, whatever whatever they did with Larson took a long time because they don't get back until. Oh, so maybe Wait. that wasn't the next day. That must have been the same night. Yeah, maybe they like went out to dinner. Because they, well, they did say, didn't she say something like, well, then let's, after he dangles the carrot, oh, to post, okay. so to speak, he's like, dinner. let's go to lunch. Oh, okay. Maybe it was dinner. Maybe it was dinner. I okay. can't remember. Yeah. They, well, whatever it was, it took a long time. Because they don't get home until the kids are supposed to be in bed. Yeah. But they're not because they're reading a romance novel. With yeah, them. like what the Luna. heck was going on there? I don't know. That was really like what odd. is she reading? It's like <laughs> I'm like, what is happening here? And then she's like, "There's the car. Go to bed." Right. But it's like she's reading this like it sounds like it's a dirty novel. Yeah, like, I mean, why, it's definitely like a romance would novel. Read a romance yeah. novel to the children. I don't know. Like I can see a scary movie or something, but like no, even it's I mean, Mona, right? You know? But would you even really want to read all those embarrassing parts in front of you? I, I don't know. <laughs> that was so mad. bizarre. Yeah, it was very odd. So um, so she sends the kids upstairs and tell, tells them, don't tell that you were reading the novel and that we had ice cream sundaes and stuff before bed. So when Mona finds out that Angela and Tony have basically given in to all of Larson's bribes, she's pretty disappointed in them. Right, she suddenly <laughs> has a conscience. Right. <laughs> and um, she is saying that, like, he's bribing her with this account and that Tony's bribe is sitting in the driveway. So they run outside and there's this really nice convertible sitting in the driveway. And I, I looked that car up because I was wondering what it could be. It almost looked like an MG, but I know those are bigger and they don't have a back seat. Well, so it, I, that's what I thought. I thought it was an MG. Yeah, but that one, it, that car has a back seat. Are you sure? I'm pretty wait, sure. Wait, which car? His the car that's in the episode. Oh, that did have a back seat. I thought it did. Oh, okay. Although, I, otherwise, I don't know where the kids were going to ride at the well, end of that the was episode. The, yeah, so that was part of my because at first I did think it was an MG because my mom had one mm-hmm. and it looks similar, but it's not. I did too. It's a Ferrari. 275 GTS from 1969, the best I can tell. Um, does it have a backseat? Yeah, let me look at this picture. Okay. It doesn't look like it has okay. a backseat. Maybe the kids were just going to ride the car. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so he's super excited about the car. And um, um, Wait a minute, I'm sorry. So what kind of car do you think it was? A Ferrari 275 GTS. And what year? 1969. Okay, I was going to say, it looked like a really old car. Yeah, yeah. It definitely was not like a brand new car. I knew it wasn't a... I mean, it like, looked like a real, an old car for even the 80s. Right, okay. but like a really cool old car. Yes, like a car. but I'm just yeah. saying, I was like, gosh, right, that right, looks right. like an old car. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know what 80s cars look like. Yeah. So, unfortunately, they both decide that they have to do the right thing. And he has to give the car back. And she has to give up the account and not take this client. So that just forces Mona to cave under the pressure and confess. Yeah, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> that she had the kids up late and that she read them a trashy novel. So no one can sleep because they're all in turmoil about having to do this. And you see Angela come downstairs to get something to eat, I'm guessing, in her little pink bathrobe. Right. And Tony's sitting outside in the car. And I love, well, earlier, he was so excited that the clock worked on the car, because I'm guessing that the <laughs> yes, clock in the I van have that has my notes never too. worked. Tony excited that the clock works in the new car, that's yeah. what I wrote in there. <laughs> and, um, my notes. Angela says, it's 4 a.m. And he says, it's 4.02. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> the, oh, my gosh. That's so funny. I did not catch that. 
Because <laughs> he looked, because he had he's the exact clock person. time. He was so excited yes. about the clock in the car. That's so funny. Yeah, it was very cute. <laughs> so now, okay, tell me the next Italian name, because I'm guessing you have it written. Dorian Dispenza? Yes. This is the sexiest. This is Dorian Dispenza. This is the sexiest Italian machine I've had in my hands, my hands on since Doreen Dispenza. <laughs> <laughs> Doreen. I'm like, are you serious? I had to, write, I had to rewind it. I'm like, Doreen. Yes. Doreen Dispenza. Dispenza. Hey. Oh. I love it. I love the Italian names. It, it's also reminiscent to me, although Seinfeld came after, where Seinfeld always had very intricate names. Like, yes. You could tell they carefully chose the names that they were going to use. And these Italian names seem the same way to me. Like they probably really look for the perfectly curated name that will yes. fit there. We should actually look those names up sometimes. I know in Seinfeld, like they made a big deal about Alec Berg. It was like one of the names. And then Jerry goes on about like Alec Berg and like such a awesome name to say or a great name to say. Well, it turns out Alec Berg's a writer. Mm. And he wrote all in Seinfeld and he wrote... Um, Barry, he's a big writer. Oh, Barry. oh, right, right, yeah. Alec Berg. Yeah. So, um, I wonder if I don't. I doubt maybe Doreen. Dis- yeah, or the- Doreen Dispenza was uh, craft services or something. Or they could be other people that Tony Danza just knows. They like knows Bob in general, right? Gervinelli. Yeah, like it could be an actual name. If I look some of these people up, there's a good chance I might be related to some of them. That's a good point, <laughs> especially after you did your ancestry. Yes, ninety-one percent. Ninety-one percent Italian. So. Um, so they, they know they have to give up the car, but not until the morning. Mm. And I, I love the little conversation that Angela and Tony have um, sitting on the hood about how honest they are. Yeah, that was, was really funny. Sweet. That was funny. That was very cute. But so they grab the kids and they go get breakfast. But again, yes, where are the kids going to sit? And two, just go get breakfast by yourself. Well, that's Leave the, the thing home. I thought, too. He's like, well, you thinking what I'm thinking or whatever and like breakfast. I'm like. Oh, that's like sweet. They're gonna go have breakfast together, and then she's like, "I'll get the kids." Right. And it's like, ah, oh. <laughs> breakfast is ruined. I know. <laughs> yes, the kids are just gonna fight. No one's gonna want to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Although those they are kids, older, but they're still. a little older. Yeah. That was the other thing from the beginning of the episode. About to go back, but um, it's such a TV morning, TV sitcom morning, because the kids come running down the stairs and they're all ready to go. It's like, show me where Tony just had to ask them to brush their teeth. 14 times. Exactly. And then he came back five minutes later and they were dancing naked in front of a mirror. Yes. That's, that's how Instead morning of goes. brushing their teeth. Right. <laughs> yes. But I guess when Tony Masella talks, you do uh, it. Sure. Sure. All right. So we've hit the end. All right. That's Good. it. Very good. What's your What's your rating for this one? Um, I mean, I didn't. I, it It was good. It was entertaining. I didn't think it was spectacular. Um, but it wasn't horrible. Uh, I would say like a six. That's my rating too. Okay, good. Yeah, six o o. Six a o o o. What's o o? There were no a o o. I know. I mean, we're episode. like we're 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 gonna keep count. Yeah. And I think we've had one, and we're five episodes in. We've had one, yes, from Tony, and then one from Samantha. True. So, uh, what, well, it's like one and a half? And the first time, like we discussed before, the first time Tony does it, it you hear the, cr- the the audience go crazy, so right. you think it's going to be every yeah, episode, yeah. and I guess it wasn't. But it must get, it must pick up speed. What the heck was that? Something's rolling on the table, oh, okay. sorry. Um, yes, my I agree. I gave it a six. It's not my okay. favorite. It has its funny moments. Um, I think I remember at the time being a kid thinking it was pretty funny, but it doesn't hold up for me as well as some of the other ones do. No, I agree. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us. You yeah, can, fun. You can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram. Uh, send us a direct message if we missed anything or if you have any information on any of the stuff that we covered that we don't know, please. Um, or anything you want us to discuss on future episodes. Or you can also go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast. And you, there you can leave us a voice message that we can play on the air. All right, yep. do we have a song? We do. This is, um, this is DeLand and Harry Vince Faustino covering the Who's the Boss theme song. It's one of them is playing guitar and one of them is singing. Nice. So enjoy this. 
If you like this podcast, please subscribe and tell all your friends and give you a big pat on the back. Who's the boss? It's time for love and time for it. Take the chance and face the wind. Brand new life, brand new life around the